Hello everyone, I am Vikramaditya here. Welcome to Jades of Tech. And in this session, we are going to discuss how do we find out if a resume is genuine or fake. So I have been listening to a lot of people who have a concern that uh, in spite of, you know, preparing well for the interviews, they are still not getting calls and uh, they're not getting any calls in the in, in the in the technology that they are expert in. Sometimes, even if you have genuine experience, somebody turns up and says to you that, you know, your resume is not shortlisted because it is a fake resume. So you would be shocked, like, you know, I, I do have a very genuine experience, but I, but you know, why did the hell did they say that it's, it's not, it's not genuine. So, uh, I mean, like there are certain things with which just in two minutes, we basically find out or decide whether a resume is genuine or fake. So uh, we, I'll, I'll explain you in this uh, session, uh, how do we actually find out if a resume is genuine or fake? And then you can uh, you can uh, make sure that you don't have the kind of uh, errors. Okay, so let's start with it. So whenever I say a resume, it should be of experienced uh, candidate. So I'm taking an example of a particular uh, person. So basically, if we see a naming convention of the resume as my resume, it's something which is done by unprofessional people or maybe people who don't have idea about how to prepare a resume. The naming convention of your resume should always be like this, like, uh, say Praveen underscore ABAP underscore 3.9 years and uh, 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 the naming convention of the resume it should be in such a way that it should give a idea about what exactly is the resume all about okay and now and one more thing is is the name of the resume your name or some other name for example if I open this resume Ashwin okay so the resume name is Ashwin but the resume is of priority uh, that's something which is fishy. So we find we, we we feel that you know this is a fake resume, and the second thing that we find out is like when I say priority, this is not uh, uniform. So it should be like this. Either it should be completely in 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 uh, uppercase or it should be completely in lowercase, something like this. Priority. This makes sense, but you know one half of the half of the name is in one font uh, half of the another half of the name is another font it, it creates a chavos now here and the mail id should never be like this like priya the princess so you cannot have a, a email id like this because most of the professionals will keep it uh, you know something like priya ready okay uh, so uh, it's obvious that you don't get a mail id like priya ready but you you will add something like 1892 or something like that uh, so this is acceptable, but you know, priority the princess or catch me if you can. So those kind of uh, email IDs, when we see it, uh, we make we conclude that this is a fake resume. Okay, and that's something. And uh, there is uh, one more thing I would like to tell you is like for example, let's say this naming convention of the resume is not correct. So if let's say this is priority's resume and uh, she's of hi she's a bad consultant with two years of experience then how do we name this resume is priya a bad three years but i always suggest you not to change a word document which is already existing to yours you you have to always prepare a new resume so let me let, let, let's say you have to open a word document and start doing everything from the beginning it might take time but this is the right way of preparing a resume take a fresh word pad type each and every line and each every every letter that you want to have it okay so even if you have a genuine experience uh, you might you might copy some uh, some of the elements from your some of the objects or some of the lines sentences from from a previous resumes or your colleagues resumes or something like that even that is considered as a fake resume okay so coming to this one uh, the naming convention by the naming convention we find out we we we, we don't conclude it but we have a op, we we have a doubt that it might be a fake resume and next thing is the name of it is priya about three years right click on this and we normally check like this go to the properties and in the properties when you go to the details here 
the last saved by is Vikram and it was actually content created in created at uh, you know uh, 2011 this was done in 2011 and who was the author the author is Acer so it sometimes it might be possible that you know uh, this resume is of Priya and it is actually been in changed or modified by Vikram and it the author is actually some other person like Ramesh now this resume is very clearly mentioned that it has been created in 2011 uh, in, in, in fourth, I mean like in the fourth month it's April 15 2011 this resume was been created so and the word document has been created in, in fact so the moment you see this you can easily find out that this is not a genuine resume because this has not been written by anyone recently it has been actually some document which is prepared prepared by this author at on this day and this is modified by you the the person who is actually sending the resume so the moment we see these details in the word document of, of the word document we can easily make out like you know whether it is a genuine resume or fake resume so uh, to avoid these kind of uh, you know discrepancies you you better open a new word document and start writing everything do not copy anything so there are some lot of techniques in which we can find out whether this is a fake resume or genuine resume so the best way is to write it down from line by line step by step type it okay now coming to this the naming convention of the resume is what i have discussed and i've discussed about the you know finding out the properties go to the properties details we can find out who created it when it was created and when when it was modified that's the second thing and uh, third thing is like you know when you open the resume it should be like the and the 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 naming convention should be uh, uniform and uh, next thing is like uh, when we see this resume uh, i will open another resume like now let's say in this resume we have something like if you see here here we have bullets this 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 type of bullets if you see here this type of bullets the aroma kind of a bullets but if you come down again the bullets have been changed there are some other set of bullets which we can see here and um, this actually creates a confusion like whether it is you know uh, it's, it's, a, it's a genuine resume or fake resume that's that's another point you need to make sure and one uh, another thing is like you know whenever you write down if it's a genuine resume a genuine resume is expected to be written, written down so even if you have a genuine experience uh, some most of us normally what they do is they copy some of the objects or some of the lines from another resume which actually can be easily you know found out as like you know for example like if i if i have this particular line from one resume and another line from another resume then what happens here is like you know i have this as ariel and this has something like word enough now if you see this i have copied this particular uh, line from one resume and this particular line from another resume so how did you how do we find it out we found it out because the font is different okay now and the another way of finding out the finding out whether it is a genuine resume or fake resume is genuine resume always has a summary like it doesn't have an objective so a a, a, a curriculum vitae will have an objective so what is an objective so objective will be in curriculum vitae the objective will be something like this objective in the resume would be something like objective will be like say uh, i'm looking out for A challenging position um, where I can prove I can prove my skill set I'm a quick learner and something like that quick learner so something like this I know uh, what are we trying to do is you are trying to impress the impress the 
interview or the person who is evaluating our uh, resume but when it comes to a experienced guy if you see they uh, they mention a summary not an objective so having three years of uh, three years nine months of experience as a pap consultant with more than five years of uh, experience in the industry IT industry seeking to work in an organization okay whatever it might be so this is something like a summary and summary should not be more than three to four lines um, it, it should be short and it should give you a give a overview of what exactly you are do not give do not put your skill set in the summary and expert, SAP expertise okay in the SAP expertise as well you know you, there is no need of, of, of making a bold kind of a letters where it is not necessary and remember in the resume it is not required to mention all the you know all your educational qualifications just the highest qualification is enough and need not mention the percentage if it is less than 70 percent so only if it is more than 70 percent you can mention the resume in, in the percentage since they have uh, you know 89.6 and uh, 89 percent so it's okay to mention that now here if you see again here there is no sequence or uniformity in this particular line so we can easily make out from this that this is not a genuine resume and um, the another one is like you know if you see the working as ABAP technical consultant this is in bold letters and uh, then again uh, there is no nothing here mentioned here what what is whatever is the designation is not been mentioned here so these are the things that we have here and uh, And here you don't have to mention this personal letters, but it is very much possible that uh, even a genuine consultant also will be mentioning his personal details. It's okay. It's it's fine to have personal details, but generally it, there's no need to keep the personal uh, details in your resume. And um, see, uh, the moment we see the naming convention of the resume we can find out whether it is a genuine resume. okay so that was something which we are talk we were talking about uh, technically speaking and now um, I'd be giving you another kind of a things in which we find out whether it's genuine resume or fake resume so uh, let's say you you have mentioned something like uh, the, uh, an outdated concept for example here uh, let's say BDC batch data communication is an outdated concept and if you if I'm saying that you know if I'm just giving an example okay so BDC is an outdated concept and if I'm mentioning that in the resume it uh, you know they might feel that this is something outdated so uh, maybe they might have not worked it worked on it so maybe that might be a fake that kind of a you know concept will come so here this uh, particular object that uh, it has been mentioned in this resume wherein like you know the pdc program to upload vendor master from legacy system so there is already a standard program for this so why the hell did they create a pdc program is what normally they have a doubt and uh, second thing is this is an outdated concept so if there are any outdated concepts which have been mentioned in your latest resume latest uh, projects that you have worked on there is a serious doubt that you know you might not be a genuine consultant and the second thing is like you know when when i when i check the client most of the most of the interviewers can make out whether there is a project with uh, and I mean like with there's a project in Patni computer systems whose client is uh, McCormick so if at all if it is there uh, is it there in the I mean like uh, is it there in in the recent time for example if you have kept it for uh, this latest year uh, say something like you know duration March 2018 till date let's say I, I have this kind of a, you know I mentioned this in the resume then you need to make sure that this particular client is having this uh, project so if it will sometimes it might be possible that you know you just mention a client which is actually you don't you know you just have to make sure that you know that's a that's a project which we have worked in and uh, you know sometimes the version you just leave it like that but the version should always be the latest one you know on which you have worked on and uh, coming to this 
client and the project we just normally check if this particular company is having this particular project or not if it's not having or if you have never done it then it's a fake resume for sure that's how we, we find out whether it's a genuine resume or fake resume so i explained that concept once again say so i will just check if petney computers had ever done a project for mac comic europe that's what we check with this we can find out whether it's a genuine resume or fake resume and uh, the roles and responsibility as, as well those roles and responsibility should always be you know uh, should be the latest one or the updated one or the genuine one and uh, next one is you should never keep the naming convention as my resume and all these things and in this if you see the house number and address and all these things are mentioned in the top which is not required actually so that also creates an impression to the to the evaluator that this might be a, a fake resume so these are couple of things which by which we can easily find out or we, we conclude that this is a fake resume and sometimes even pe even people who have genuine experience uh, do skip these kind of things instead of writing down the resume they just copy it and paste it from some other resumes which makes an impression which gives an impression to the evaluator that this is also a fake resume so make sure you don't do these kind of mistakes and i'll keep uh, doing more sessions on which which might help you to uh, land you in a job and uh, do write in the comments what you would like to see in the coming sessions in the videos and i'll try to make it uh, as soon as possible thank you And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash jsofttech. And if at all, if you are looking out for any kind of trainings, you can contact us at training at jsofttech.com. And if at all, if you are looking out for jobs, you can contact us at jobs at jsofttech.com. Have a great day.